Hello everyone, this is Blake, ortsdb 71 Sorry for the, uh, the false start there, but I wanted you to hear the beginning of this because when I first heard it, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. Graded on me, could not understand why in the hell somebody would put this on vinyl. But, after learning a little bit, I now love it. Roscoe Mitchell's Nonea. Listen. Have you figured it out yet? <laughs> Alright, so I'll talk about this a little bit. So apparently, uh, Roscoe Mitchell was asked to do, to fill in for uh, Anthony Braxton, who failed or couldn't make it for some reason to a concert, um, a solo concert um, in. Uh, shoot, I don't know where. Any. Uh, Willisaw, Switzerland, in August of 1976. So, uh, Roscoe happened to be nearby, and so they asked him, "Hey, can you can you put together uh, a concert uh, to to fill in for Anthony?" And so, uh, Roscoe did. And it says here in in the the verbiage, uh, very good liner notes here. Um, actually, let me read it to you. It was strange, the whole thing, because the ensemble had played there a few days before and I was just taking time to relax before going to Italy. Then all of a sudden, Anthony wasn't coming to give a solo concert and they said, okay, we want you to do a concert. So I ran to the hotel and got my alto. I had an hour to warm it up. I went out there and got this tension thing. Tension, yeah. It was a battle. I had to make the noise and whatever was going on with the audience part of the piece. The music couldn't move until they respected me, until they realized that I wasn't going anywhere and if someone was, was going, it would have had to be them. It was very interesting and it helped to create the environment the piece was to take place in, building tensions. And when I finally did release it and my alto had just given in to me, it said, okay, you can play me now. I started to open it up sound-wise, then putting in smears and different sounds. And by the time it finally reached the end at the encore piece, it had all pulled together. So you hear the crowd now starting to open up, I guess. You hear the crowd behind them. So when I first heard this, you know, it was very early in my my foray into improvised music or free music and stuff like that. I happened to get a copy of this, a very nice copy. It's probably so nice it's a reissue. Um, I'm not sure of the labels, but this is the label. Someone can tell me if this is a reissue or not. Um, if it's not a reissue, it's a damn nice, it's a damn nice shape. Um, so when I heard this, I mean, this goes on for 20 nearly 22 minutes, right? And I, I sat through this for a little while and I just couldn't do it. No way. I'm not ready for this. You know you know how it is when you're exploring new music. So I put it aside and I've learned you know, a lot of stuff about music and the musicians and things. And now coming back to this, listening to it closely, I hear what's going on and, and the, the very minute changes that he's making. And so, what sounds like on the surface is the same set of notes. It really is a different, uh, different emphasis on various notes, different expressive uh, sounds. Uh, like later on, as I read, you'll hear doing some smears and making some changes to to how he's bending some of the notes and stuff on his horn. 
uh, it really does uh, set that tension there at the very beginning and opens it up near the end. Now, it's my understanding, Nonea uh, has four different movements, and this is how he's developed it here. Um, there's, you know, there'll be a piece. Oh, we're still a good ways from it now, but uh, it'll go off, and he'll he'll play a little bit, a uh, little bit of other music. Um, and then he'll come back to this kind of theme, and then he'll end out with another another portion. Turn this down. But Roger, uh, great question. This what is indeed one of those. I hated it. Uh, I had no idea that I would ever come to understand it. Not that I say I understand it. It's just now I can listen and listen to it and get something out of it. Whereas before, um, I did not have the patience for it. So. Roscoe Mitchell's Nonea on Nessa label. Nessa 9 and 10. It's a 2 LP. Okay, so the album is a 2 LP set. Um, as you can see here, there's you know, a side A and B, and this is from his concert that he filled in for. And then there's some more uh, pieces of other shows. Here he's playing with Anthony Braxton uh, in Chicago, uh, with Malachi Favors in Chicago. And with George Lewis and Muhal Richard Abrams in Chicago, you know, all in '77. So, oh wait, yeah, there's ID uh, solo in Chicago, and then with well, with Joseph Jarman, Wallace McMillan, I'm not very familiar with, and Threadgill. Uh, so, lots of good music on here, but the the piece that I just couldn't do with it was uh, the title track. Nonea. Um, so there you go. I, uh, maybe this is a, maybe this resonates with others out there in the community that that have had the same reaction. Uh, here, getting into the or getting close to the second portion of uh, the piece. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll tune it out now, and uh, maybe one day you can later appreciate this because uh, you're probably having the same reaction to it like I did. What the hell? <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.